Stereographic projection. In geometry, the stereographic projection is a particular mapping function that projects a sphere onto a plane. The projection is defined on the entire sphere, except at one point, the projection point. Where it is defined, the mapping is smooth and bijective. It is conformal, meaning that it preserves angles at which curves meet. It is neither isometric nor area preserving, that is, it preserves neither distances nor the areas of figures. Intuitively, then, the stereographic projection is a way of picturing the sphere as the plane with some inevitable compromises. Because the sphere and the plane appear in many areas of mathematics and its applications. In practice, the projection is carried out by computer or by hand using a special kind of graph paper called a stereographic net, shortened to stereonet or wolf net. History The stereographic projection was known to Hipparchus, Ptolemy, and probably earlier to the Egyptians. It was originally known as the planisphere projection. Planispherium by Ptolemy is the oldest surviving document that describes it. One of its most important uses was the representation of celestial charts. The term planisphere is still used to refer to such charts. In the 16th and 17th century, the equatorial aspect of the stereographic projection was commonly used for maps of the eastern and western hemispheres. It is believed that already the map created in 1507 by Gualtierius Ludd was in stereographic projection, as were later the maps of Jean Rose 1542, Rumold Mercator 1595, and many others. In star charts, even this equatorial aspect had been utilized already by the ancient astronomers like Ptolemy. Francois d'Aguillon gave the stereographic projection its current name in his 1613 work Opticorum Libri Sex Philosophies Juxta AC Mathematicis Utiles, six books of optics, useful for philosophers and mathematicians alike. In 1695, Edmund Halley, motivated by his interest in star charts, published the first mathematical proof that this map is conformal. He used the recently established tools of calculus invented by his friend Isaac Newton. Definition and Definition First Formulation Other Conventions Generalizations Properties Wolf Net Stereographic projection plots can be carried out by a computer using the explicit formulas given above. However, for graphing by hand these formulas are unwieldy. Instead, it is common to use graph paper designed specifically for the task. This special graph paper is called a stereonet or wolf net, after the Russian mineralogist George Yuri Viktorovich Wolf. The wolf net shown here is the stereographic projection of the grid of parallels and meridians of a hemisphere centered at a point on the equator such as the eastern or western hemisphere of a planet. In the figure, the area distorting property of the stereographic projection can be seen by comparing a grid sector near the center of the net with one at the far right or left. The two sectors have equal areas on the sphere. On the disk, the latter has nearly four times the area of the former. If the grid is made finer, this ratio approaches exactly four. On the wolf net, the images of the parallels and meridians intersect at right angles. This orthogonality property is a consequence of the angle-preserving property of the stereoscopic projection. However, the angle-preserving property is stronger than this property. Not all projections that preserve the orthogonality of parallels and meridians are angle-preserving. For an example of the use of the wolf net, imagine two copies of it on thin paper, one atop the other, aligned and tacked at their mutual center. Let P be the point on the lower unit hemisphere, whose spherical coordinates are 104 tidig, 6 tidig, and whose Cartesian coordinates are 0 0.321, 0 0.557, 0 0.766. This point lies on a line oriented 6 tidig counterclockwise from the positive x axis, or 3 tidig clockwise from the positive y axis and 5 tidig below the horizontal planes E equals 0. Once these angles are known, there are four steps to plotting P. Using the grid lines, which are spaced 10 deg apart, 
in the figures here, mark the point on the edge of the net that is six-tided counterclockwise from the point one zero or third-tided clockwise from the point zero one. Rotate the top net until this point is aligned with one zero on the bottom net. Using the grid lines on the bottom net, mark the point that is fifth-tided toward the center from that point. Rotate the top net oppositely to how it was oriented before to bring it back into alignment with the bottom net. The point marked in step 3 is then the projection that we wanted. To plot other points whose angles are not such round numbers as six-tided and fifth-tided, one must visually interpolate between the nearest grid lines. It is helpful to have a net with finer spacing than 10 deg. Spacings of 2 deg are common. To find the central angle between two points on the sphere based on their stereographic plot, overlay the plot on a wolf net and rotate the plot about the center until the two points lie on or near a meridian. Then measure the angle between them by counting grid lines along that meridian. Applications within mathematics Complex analysis Visualization of lines and planes the set of all lines through the origin in three-dimensional space forms a space called the real projective plane. This space is difficult to visualize because it cannot be embedded in three-dimensional space. However, one can approximately visualize it as a disk as follows. Any line through the origin intersects the southern hemisphere z equals zero in a point, which can then be stereographically projected to a point on a disk. Horizontal lines intersect the southern hemisphere in two antipodal points along the equator, either of which can be projected to the disk. It is understood that antipodal points on the boundary of the disk represent a single line. See quotient topology. So any set of lines through the origin can be pictured, almost perfectly, as a set of points in a disk. Also, every plane through the origin intersects the unit sphere in a great circle, called the trace of the plane. This circle maps to a circle under stereographic projection. So the projection lets us visualize planes as circular arcs in the disk. Prior to the availability of computers, stereographic projections with great circles often involved drawing large radius arcs that required use of a beam compass. Computers now make this task much easier. Further associated with each plane is a unique line, called the plane's pole, that passes through the origin and is perpendicular to the plane. This line can be plotted as a point on the disk just as any line through the origin can. So the stereographic projection also lets us visualize planes as points in the disk. For plots involving many planes, plotting their poles produces a less cluttered picture than plotting their traces. This construction is used to visualize directional data in crystallography and geology, as described below. Other visualization. Stereographic projection is also applied to the visualization of polytopes. In a Schlegel diagram, an n-dimensional polytope in Rn plus 1 is projected onto an n-dimensional sphere, which is then stereographically projected onto Rn. The reduction from Rn plus 1 to Rn can make the polytope easier to visualize and understand. Arithmetic geometry. Tangent half angle substitution, applications to other disciplines, cartography. The fundamental problem of cartography is that no map from the sphere to the plane can accurately represent both angles and areas. In general, area preserving map projections are preferred for statistical applications, while angle preserving conformal map projections are preferred for navigation. Stereographic projection falls into the second category. When the projection is centered at the Earth's north or south pole, it has additional desirable properties. It sends meridians to rays emanating from the origin and parallels to circles centered at the origin. Planetary science. The stereographic is the only projection that maps all circles on a sphere to circles on a plane. This property is valuable in planetary mapping where craters are typical features. The set of circles passing through the point of projection have unbounded radius and therefore degenerate into lines. Crystallography In crystallography, 
The orientations of crystal axes and faces in three-dimensional space are a central geometric concern, for example, in the interpretation of X-ray and electron diffraction patterns. These orientations can be visualized as in the section visualization of lines and planes above. That is, crystal axes and poles to crystal planes are intersected with the northern hemisphere and then plotted using stereographic projection. A plot of poles is called a pole figure. In electron diffraction, Kikuchi line pairs appear as bands decorating the intersection between lattice plane traces and the Yule sphere thus providing experimental access to a crystal's stereographic projection. Model Kikuchi maps in reciprocal space and fringe visibility maps for use with bend contours in direct space thus act as road maps for exploring orientation space with crystals in the transmission electron microscope. Geology, Geology Researchers in structural geology are concerned with the orientations of planes and lines for a number of reasons. The foliation of a rock is a planar feature that often contains a linear feature called lineation. Similarly, a fault plane is a planar feature that may contain linear features such as silicon sides. These orientations of lines and planes at various scales can be plotted using the methods of the visualization of lines and planes section above. As in crystallography, planes are typically plotted by their poles. Unlike crystallography, the southern hemisphere is used instead of the northern one because the geological features in question lie below the Earth's surface. In this context, the stereographic projection is often referred to as the equal angle lower hemisphere projection. The equal area lower hemisphere projection defined by the Lambert as a equal area projection is also used, especially when the plot is to be subjected to subsequent statistical analysis such as density contouring. Photography Some fisheye lenses use a stereographic projection to capture a wide angle view. Compared to more traditional fisheye lenses which use an equal area projection, areas close to the edge retain their shape, and straight lines are less curved. However, stereographic fisheye lenses are typically more expensive to manufacture. Image remapping software, such as Panatools, allows the automatic remapping of photos from an equal area fisheye. The stereographic projection has been used to map spherical panoramas, starting with Horace Benedict de Saussure's in 1779. This results in effects known as a little planet when the center of projection is the nadir and a tube when the center of projection is the zenith. The popularity of using stereographic projections to map panoramas over other azimuthal projections is attributed to the shape preservation that results from the conformality of the projection.